Okay. Uh, I think that's fine. Yes. Okay. But perhaps you can answer the question. Yeah. Thank you very much. <clears throat> then I was still saying we touched upon this uh, in the State of the Nation address that part of the bottleneck has been, in fact, the lack of the infrastructure. As I said earlier, our infrastructure historically was done in a particular way to cater, not for everybody else. And that's why in some areas where people are complaining, there is no infrastructure to do the delivery. Therefore, the question of our infrastructure today is, in fact, among other things, to facilitate delivery. Because in areas, for an example, where there is no infrastructure, how do you bring water? So that is part of, of the issue. We are much aware of it. But as I say, it's not as if nothing has been done. I come from a village which used to be dark up to very recently. Today I can have electricity in my village. It has been able to come there. But the question of the infrastructure remains the challenge. That's the challenge we're tackling right now. So that's a point I think is important to be made. Because even, even in the urban areas, at times the bulk infrastructure lacks. Because it was not meant to service other areas. You have, for an example, because of the openness that people are around, the informal settlements, not planned. People moving from where there's no employment, no infrastructure, to the urban areas was not meant to cater for, the, for those numbers. That is what we are trying to deal with right now. It's a challenge of changing the quality of life of our country. With regard to the piracy in terms of uh, the artists, that is a problem I think that everybody is aware of. I think the police have taken it very seriously. I, I know that in the recent past, they have been raiding shops and places where sell these uh, CDs. And the police are indeed working very hard to address the issue. So it is a matter that is receiving attention as well from the police. All right, let's uh, take some more questions uh, from the floor. All right, thanks very much, Peter. I have a question right here. Okay, there we go, on my table, actually. Uh, James, you've got a lovely pr question that I, th I think the president will appreciate. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to outdo Mr. Beloved. <laughs> 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 Comrade President, uh, I would like to say you're a good man and doing a good job. I'm sure everybody agrees. Mm -hmm. What is your wish list from the private sector? Say three items. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, the private sector, firstly, they must invest. That's my number one uh, item on my wish list. They must invest. They must invest in the country. Uh, they must have confidence in their own country because other private sector companies from out there, they look upon you, whether you are investing in your own country, whether you've got confidence in our own country. But also, the big business must help develop the small business. Because developing a small business, you actually help your own business to be sustained and to develop. So it is important that there is an, a kind of an understanding that comes out of the manner in which business does business to other businesses. But also the private sector in South Africa that is based in the continent of Africa must invest in the continent of Africa because it is an accepted fact that Africa is one of the growing regions economically in the world. So you have to make Africa your destination. Take advantage of what you can do in Africa. Other regions have developed, can no longer develop faster, but Africa is there. I would be very happy that our businesses are not taken over 
by businesses from all over the world when you have the potential. I think you must invest. The political organization, the AU, has opened up opportunities. We have just taken a decision in the last summit that not only three regions must create a free trade zone, that throughout the continent, there's going to be a free trade zone. I think it is the businesses in the continent that must take the first advantage of that one. That is my short with wish list. Uh, Mr. President. <laughs> Uh, Mr. President, you've mentioned Africa, and we don't often get an opportunity to talk about foreign policy. Uh, first of all, uh, you must be disappointed that uh, Home Affairs Minister Kosasana um, Tlaminizuma didn't get to secure the position as the African Union Chair. Is this a sign, perhaps, that the African Union itself is not totally united? No, firstly, that process is not yet over. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could make a categorical statement that she did not succeed. The process is not yet over. Elections were suspended for the next um, summit. So <clears throat> still she can, st yeah, absolutely. <laughs> she can still do it. Mm. Why not? I know. <clears throat> I know that some of your colleagues made a lot of comments mm. about how Africa is divided, etc. I don't read that situation in that way. Firstly, democracy means there must be competition. And in the contestation, somebody must lose and somebody must win. It doesn't, it doesn't give an impression people are divided. I think it's a wrong way of interpreting what happens uh, in, 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 in the AU. <clears throat> Why people had to go to, the, to, to, to that level? Firstly, in an organization, now maybe I can't talk about yeah. business organization, yeah. I don't know how they carry their affairs, whether they just appoint, we are democratic, <laughs> we elect. <laughs> <laughs> In our organization, you have a view that these are the tasks of the organization, these are the objectives, these are things we want to achieve. And you then say, who amongst us can help us to achieve those. Mm. You then begin to say, I think it is this particular person. And you then present that person as a candidate. It's about how do we move forward in our objectives. It's not about how much we are divided and then put candidates because we are divided. I don't think so. Our view is that AU, it's a very important continental organization. In the manner in which it has been doing things, we don't think it has been able to do certain things to move with times. And that's why we presented a candidate, which we believe, knowing her as we do, will help Africa to move forward in its including unity, including mm. being effective, including doing things for Africans, not for other people. And that's the reason why we put the candidate. And our candidate is formidable. And we believe that informed our decision. Our decision was not informed by the divisions in the continent. You cannot have people thinking exactly the same way, even if you have got one organization. You start from a point of view that you have got different views that you engage and finally come to a point where you agree this is the way to go. Africa has a history. We started with the OAU. When the OAU was established, there were views and views in the, in, in the OAU. There was, for an example, those who came from the Moravian group and the Casablanca group. And it was during the time of the Cold War, where in big blocks, East and West, wanted to influence countries in the continent. But even with that situation, the objective was unity of the continent, even at that time. We've developed to the AU, African Union. That is the objective. The question is, can we have one of the Africans 
qualified to help the AU achieve that objective. That is what informed this. That is what might have informed the way people voted. I, I think this question of emphasizing divisions, etc., by African journalists is actually, to me, an unfortunate situation. Okay. They are not looking at the positiveness of what we are trying to do. Some say it is because South Africa was to lead the continent and bulldoze the continent. I think it is all wrong. It's negativity that we don't need in the continent. We need people to appreciate that that organization which puts together the continent, if we say Africa is one of the, of the fastest developing uh, region economically in the world, it means its organization must be checked up. It must be effective. It must be able to see those issues. And you need a person who must do so. And that's why we put that candidate very forcefully. But that is an objective we want to achieve. And it represents all Africa. It's not a dividing kind of an element. Right. OK, one final question about foreign policy. <laughs> uh, in this past week, uh, former President Thabo Mbeki met with uh, Iran's deputy president. Is this a meeting that you sanctioned? Is he intervening on your behalf? And also, what's happening in Syria must be a concern. You're president of the uh, Security Council, 13 votes against two. China and Russia chose to go against the general feeling. What are your thoughts on that? Because thousands of lives continue to be lost in Syria. So the first question, Iran, Oil prices are going through the roof as a result of what's going on there. This meeting, was that something that you sanctioned from your office? <clears throat> no. I think the vice president of Iran was, as, as, as we, as I know, was passing through South Africa. Uh, he was not coming for any meeting. But I think there was, a, because they know each other, there was a meeting with former President Beggy. Uh, we indicated this, uh, that he had had this meeting. But it was not a planned meeting at all. I think people pass through South Africa, meet people. I don't think we can say people cannot meet. Uh, there was no planned meeting, uh, but they did meet. We, he was passing through as transiting. Um, I don't think that's a big issue, really. With regard to uh, Syria, as you know, we all voted for the resolution that was finally discussed after a long time and consensus emerged. Of course, two uh, countries that have a veto exercise their veto power. <clears throat> That's what we, all, we always call for reforming the United Nations because we can't in the world of democracy have countries that can stop the will of the majority by a veto. It's, 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 it's not on because we could be moving now. But of course, there are issues that might have informed those two countries. I'm not aware what are the issues. The reality is that this, this resolution was discussed very thoroughly and <clears throat> indeed finally reached consensus, which was looking at how do we save the lives in Syria. And I'm sure there will be a continuation of the discussion as to what is it that could be done in order to solve that problem in that country. Uh, it's unfortunate that that resolution was not concluded in the manner in which it was and therefore it cannot be implemented now. We need to find ways and means as to how do we speed the process of stopping the killings in Syria. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, not quite getting away from uh, foreign policy, but a little bit of a different angle yeah. and moving off of the continent. We have the Italian ambassador who is with us in the audience this morning. It's good to have you and you have a question. Good morning, Mr. President. Um, just arrived, so maybe I, my impression is wrong, but um, uh, Europe and uh, European countries do not seem to be on, on the radar of, of your program. So that would be, if it is true, it's a pity because we have a lot to share in our experiences with you in creating jobs and making of a very poor country like Italy was, an example, one of the biggest industry in the world. So really we can share experiences, promote investments from our country to your country, from Europe to your country, and also help you in avoiding our mistakes. What is the last portion of your... <laughs> 
if we can help you in avoiding the mistakes that we have done in our industrial policies and creating jobs, we will be happy to do that. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Europe is very much in our radar. It's not outside. Uh, it has been for centuries. Um, I think we have been able to interact with Europe. We have been able to have discussions on a number of ways, in individual countries as well as EU itself. South Africa, in fact, has an arrangement to meet with EU on a regular basis where in all European countries are together. So it is very much in our radar. <clears throat> uh, however, we do appreciate the fact that the economic landscape is changing in the world. And these are matters to be taken into account as, as, as we interact. We also have a history with Europe, <clears throat> a history that has helped us, a history also that has not necessarily helped us. But we, for an example, South Africa, Europe is our biggest trading area. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> and that's why we'd be very keen to know what is that went wrong, what mistakes that were committed. We certainly are, are ready to learn as to what happened. I attended the last G20 in Cannes, where in the discussions uh, in Europe were very hot about Greece. <clears throat> and I remember uh, Italy also came into the discussions. At that time, Berlusconi was the head of the government. In fact, he had made the point, as you make, that we are a big economy, that uh, Italy was number three in terms of size, in terms of Europe. And he believed then that he was going to be able to deal with the matters. But of course, I think it was a matter of two weeks or three weeks thereafter uh, that the situation became untenable. I'm sure we'll be very keen to learn. We want to be able to, to have discussions with you. We are aware that Italy in particular has an experience to deal with the, the small and medium uh, kind of businesses. And therefore that's an experience we need. And I'm sure you are being here will be very helpful so that we can be able to learn from what you did to succeed, to have that kind of level which has helped your economy. Uh, to move forward. It's still a big economy. I remember the Maristoni said that, uh, well, our economy is big. People who are causing problems are the uh, speculators who are speculating about currencies. Otherwise, we have no difficulty. But of course, the difficulties are there. What we are looking forward as a leadership from Europe, how do you get out of the Eurozone problem? Because your experience should help us. Because your problem is impacting on us. We are always looking up to you and let us see that leadership. Because Europe has been discussing this issue for a long time. They don't seem to discuss it and come with very clear resolution to get out of the trouble so that we can learn. So certainly we, ac we accept the challenge that we should interact. We are certainly within our radar, not outside of our radar. We can't do without Europe. And I don't think you can do without Africa too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. President, uh, we're slowly running out of time, but uh, one issue that you raised uh, in your speech yesterday was the issue of land reform. And you said that uh, willing buyer, willing seller, that process is not working. What are the possible alternatives? Well, as I said yesterday, <clears throat> Peter, we are looking at it. Certainly, we've got it to find ways and means of dealing with it. It's an issue we cannot avoid. The willing seller, willing buyer process of restitution was an important one. We didn't say it does not work. We said it has not helped us to solve the problem. It has. Part of its difficulties has been the manner in which it has been done. We have had situations that we have come across now, as you are looking, wherein the farm would be bought by government and given to people or person, and those people will give it back. Some of them front. The fronting is actually there. And some of them sell it back and they remain where they were. 
And some of them would say, we need money rather than the farm. We are now re-looking into those issues because it does not help that we don't deal with this issue decisively. The fact of the matter is that a lot of land was taken away and therefore many people were made to remain landless as it is put by one of the leaders of the ANC when it was formed or even before that suddenly an African woke up one day landless. Now we cannot allow that situation to continue. We need to find ways and means. I said yesterday in the State of the Nation address, there is a green paper that has emerged to deal with that issue. We would need frank views of South Africans how to solve the land question. We have to. We can't look at it as if it's not a problem. It is a problem. We need to find a solution that is in keeping with our constitution, that is in keeping with our democracy, but that is in keeping with our effort to address the plight of the poor. And these are the key issues to look at. All right, Mr. President, uh, just your final thoughts in perhaps 30 seconds from what you've heard today and perhaps reflecting back on uh, what you said yesterday. Well, I'm happy that uh, South Africans have taken note of what the government is saying. I'm very happy. And I believe it is all of us who must participate positively to ensure that this program we have put across works. I think we should all be positive. We should all work towards helping it to succeed. Helping that program will be helping to create more opportunities in this country. And certainly, who will win will be South Africa, not individuals, not government. So let us all put our hands together to make South Africa succeed. Mr. President, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.